Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining this session. I am Sumit. Uh, so I'll be taking most of the webinar today along with my colleagues, Naveen and Sabrish, who are also part of the panel. Uh, before we start, uh, I'll quickly introduce myself. Uh, I am Sumit, as I mentioned, I lead Analytics Labs, co-founder of Analytics Labs. Uh, overall, I look for the organization's direction, growth, uh, industry relationships and external collaborations. I also have my other co-founders to help me with responsibilities related to training and delivery, admin operations and certifications and placements. So overall, I have uh, over 15 years of experience now. And fortunately, I was able to uh, learn a lot in these 15 years uh, working in multiple geographies. Uh, I started my career when actually there was no term like data science or data scientist. Uh, it used to be broadly called as analytics. Uh, the kind of tools which we talk about these days, they were not uh, popular or many of them did not even exist at that time uh, for the in context of data science. So uh, one of the things which we would want to uh, cover today is demystify data science, uh, help you to understand it better, especially from career point of view and uh, share as much as practical examples I have learned from the industry and I'm still learning from the industry while working with uh, aspirants like you and while working with our clients. If we quickly look at uh, the agenda which we have, uh, this is something we broadly follow and more than happy to have your questions which you can share in the uh, Q&A panel. Uh, me, my co-panelist will uh, try our best to answer all the questions. Uh, just in case if any question is unanswered, uh, we would be definitely taking it up offline with you today or uh, during the week, but definitely uh, we'll be addressing all the questions. So coming back to the agenda, uh, first we'll talk about what are man companies, uh, also erstwhile known as fan companies. Uh, some of you guys may already know about it, but the idea would to understand why do they matter and uh, what is its implication for people like uh, you or people like us who uh, work in the field of data science and AI. Uh, and why career in data science? Uh, why does it make sense? Uh, then we'll also look at what is data science? I believe you all understand to a level, but in simple terms, what is data science and especially how does it work uh, when it comes to enterprise or organization levels? And then some of the very important pieces around uh, what are the different interdisciplinary skills we need in analytics uh, roles. So few questions we get very often that I am from non-technical background, uh, I have already have 10 years of experience. I have five years of experience. I have not done coding in past. So we'll understand that analytics or data science as a career needs multidisciplinary skills. So there is a role to be played by everyone when it comes to uh, jobs in data science, which is of course connected to understanding the different type of job roles in data science, especially when you're starting your career in data science, uh, there could be variety of job roles to begin with. And depending on your education background, if you have any experience or no experience, what kind of job role should you target? And uh, most importantly, what could be the roadmap to crack it? Uh, to an extent, we all understand, but it's always better to look at it in a structured manner what are the different things we need to do, why they are important. So all that we will discuss. Uh, and most importantly, we'll also share some student success stories. We may not uh, have that in detail in today's session, but when we share the recording or the deck, you can see some of the student uh, success stories where they come from very different backgrounds, sometimes long career gap coming from academics background 
coming from non-technical background. So it's about them how they started. And we'll spend little time on help you to understand what are some of the popular certification courses we have. And depending on where do you fit in, what could be a good course for you? This is a decision we can guide you, but the idea would be by the end of this webinar, you should be able to take that decision uh, for yourself. Uh, I hope this sounds good. Uh, before we start, I don't see any questions in the chat window. Okay, great. So taking on the very first thing, uh, so what are the man companies? What, what, what do you think, uh, what is it about? Any answers uh, you would want to share, please drop in the chat window. Uh, Product-based companies, yes, largely correct. In larger context, we can say so. Anyone else? Okay. Okay. Have you guys heard about fan companies? Okay. Google, Apple. Uh, fair enough. Somia. Okay. Right. So let's quickly look at it. What do we mean by man companies? So man companies refers to Meta, which earlier was also known as Facebook till about a year back, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. Now, what's common in all these companies? They are very, very tech forward companies. They have redefined the space they work in, right? Uh, Facebook for that matter, has totally changed how we socially interact or share our stories uh, with our social circle, with our friends. Apple for that matter has really changed how do we use smart devices or what are the capabilities smart devices can have. Amazon has totally changed the way we shop and it's not just about shopping anymore. It's also about a lot of cloud infrastructure which supports us to have this kind of advanced tech accessible. Then we have uh, Netflix. It has redefined how do we consume content, the entertainment content, the documentaries. Uh, of course, there are uh, other companies like Netflix, but these companies have been generally the torch bearer of innovation or first starter uh, when it comes to their respective space. Google that for matter does a lot of things. Uh, at some point of time, it had a social platform also. I'm not sure how many of you know about, let's say, Orkut. Uh, Google right now also has Google uh, Cloud Services, which uh, provides cloud computing services. Uh, then, of course, your Gmail, search engine, uh, almost whole of the world when they have to look for anything, first thing they do is Google. So it, it, it's that kind of dominance they have. So the point is, why do they matter? Uh, the one thing which will help you to understand the importance of these companies, along with some other tech companies like Microsoft and Tesla, in 2021, their market capitalization touched $10 trillion. Uh, just to put this number into perspective, India's GDP is about 2.5 to $3 billion. And we are talking about a number three or four times larger than that. So you can imagine the kind of impact these companies have on the world. Uh, in more than one sphere, they have changed how we do uh, things, how we consume content, how do we work, how do we interact. Right, that's the power of technology or the kind of data science these companies use at the back end 
that they have that kind of tremendous value. Uh, I'll share an example. Uh, some people may understand it be even better than me if you are from, let's say, technical or computer science background. But just to keep it simple, our uh, computing systems right now, they work in binary systems, one and zero, the low level languages, they use programming uh, coding, which is based on binary systems, one and zero. Google has already successfully uh, done many experiments or in fact, proof of concepts on quantum computing. What does this mean? The amount of computational power in coming years, mankind would have. Uh, we don't have any scale to measure that as of now. So when we talk about artificial intelligence, uh, really powerful to even perform art, that's a kind of computation power quantum computing can provide. If we talk about human beings becoming uh, multi-planetary species, you need all these kind of tech or computation power. So that's what uh, these companies uh, contribute. Now, not limiting this to these five, seven companies, the point to understand here is uh, the world we live in, technology plays a very important role and any organization which leverages technology effectively to create value for customers, to make their life easy, to make their life more convenient, to make their life more safer, uh, is bound to generate value. Let's look at another example. Uh, it's not really part of Man Group, but not very different also. Let's talk about Uber. Now, 15, 20 years back, uh, no one would have thought that we would book a ride using a phone uh, without calling or talking to anyone with a stranger to go from one place to the other. And we may not have uh, interacted with that stranger in past, right? But Uber completely changed the way we hire a cab or uh, ride from one place to the other, even Tesla for that matter, right? So we started the discussion with MAG, uh, this group of elite five companies, uh, right? But you can very well extrapolate uh, the value or the essence uh, which these, this term carries to many other companies. Even for that matter, FinTech companies, some of the banking companies have very cutting edge data science capabilities. Uh, dynamically in split second, they can detect online credit card frauds. They can decline the credit card transaction if they detect a fraud. So even that is something which is of great value to customers to make their lives more secure. Now, again, coming back to the point as a customer, as part of the community, as part of the society, yeah, this means a lot, but how about uh, as an aspirant, as a working professional, or as a student who start planning to start career, why does it matter to us? So the question is, why do they matter? And there are three simple points I'm going to put. I have already talked about some examples from community, society, uh, human race point of view. But simply as a professional, as a student, as an aspirant, why do they matter to us? One, they lead the trends for the world to follow in AI and tech. So what they do today, that's what in coming years or uh, coming times, many, many large organizations do follow. Uh, one simplest example would be Tesla. So even some of the world's largest organizations, uh, automobile manufacturing companies have not been able to replicate the success of Tesla. But that's a gold standard when we talk about uh, EVs and autonomous driving, right? Another example, when we talk about online shopping experience, uh, still the benchmark is Amazon. Without any human interaction or very minimal human interaction from 
order placement to order fulfillment and updates at every place, it's taken care of fairly well. Another example, uh, and uh, this time I would say a uh, uh, little technical. So you guys might know about business forecasting. It's a, it's a technique which is used uh, in uh, business analytics uh, to forecast what is likely to happen next uh, by almost all businesses. You may want to forecast your sales. You may want to forecast the customer demand, anything. Now, a few years back, Facebook uh, created a package called Profit, P-R-O-P-H-E-T, Profit, uh, which we still use as one of the very reliable or easy to use tools in Python, in R, uh, to do business forecasting, right? Uh, similarly, many of these companies have made their codes open source uh, for the rest of the world to pick it, improve it. We talk about chatbots, we talk about uh, intelligent conversations with machines can do these days. So Facebook, Google, they have contributed tremendously by creating some of these models, then share it with the world which we as a business analytics people or data scientists use uh, day in, day out for their uh, work. Second point is huge opportunities and global exposure at an unparalleled scale. Uh, so let's say when you work with these kind of companies, uh, and as I said, I'm not talking about just these five companies, it could be any tech forward companies which you might want to uh, sorry, which you might want to uh, work for, but there are a lot of learning opportunities uh, and exposure. The problems you will try to solve, they can actually uh, impact a lot of uh, mankind in multiple ways in medicine, in agriculture, in how people connect with each other. And the scale is unparalleled because with the reach of technology, uh, how much you can contribute and how many people you can connect, uh, that's actually, that has never, we have never witnessed before. There is a very popular example we talk about that the world's largest hotel company does not own any hotel. Uh, they refer to Airbnb. It's a company based on technology and data science. Uh, similarly for Uber, they say the largest uh, cab company in the world does not own any cab. So just an example, the kind of opportunities and exposure you get. And most importantly, uh, if we also see being a little more selfish, <laughs> uh, working with these companies give us higher salary packages than average and a lot of growth, uh, of course, owing to the tremendous value they create. So all this is important, both at community level as a human race, uh, and of course, as a professional, if we talk about our aspirations and what do we want to learn and grow as a professional. Okay, so before we move next, uh, if you have any questions, you can type in the chat. There's a small poll shared uh, by the team. If you guys can uh, quickly take out 20 seconds to fill that uh, poll, that will be helpful, guys. And I am taking a short pause if there are any questions. Okay. Now connected to the same thing. Uh, Okay. 
Yeah, so we have a data engineering course there we use GCP or AWS depending on the industry demand, we pick up the most popular one. Earlier we were using GCP, but as of now, I think we are not doing GCP, we're sticking to AWS or Azure. So that's a question we will be answering guys. Uh, uh, Kumar, uh, Divakar, so allow me some time. Okay, now in this similar context, when we talk about high growth career, uh, the career in data science becomes a very, very obvious, or I would say a top choice. Let's look at why. One, it's a very high demand career. So if we look at the monster, which is one of the world's largest job portal, uh, it's number one in demand uh, as a job role in 2022. NASCOM, which is a very elite body of Indian tech companies and uh, uh, IT companies, it has predicted there is a shortage of 16 lakh uh, digital professionals. A bulk of it is, of course, uh, analytics. Uh, if we talk about a uh, survey of 2021, the average the median salary for a big a fresher, it's 4.7 lakhs per annum. So if you look at it, uh, definitely very high demand. Now, the other thing is, sometimes you see jobs are in high demand. You get into job, but probably after you got get into job, the growth stagnates, but that's not the case in analytics. Analytics professionals command uh, around 30% premium uh, in salary when compared to other similar fields, let's say software engineering, digital marketing, uh, research analyst, uh, but in analytics, the salary would be on average 30% higher. In six years, once you start your career, the salary growth is around 10x. Uh, that's a kind of growth uh, we see uh, in analytics. Uh, for tenured professionals, after you have cleared, let's say, certain number of years, uh, the salary brackets range into 50 lakhs to 75 lakhs as of 2022. So definitely the demand is there. Once you are absorbed in this workforce, the growth is also there. And something even more important beyond the numbers and salaries, there is a reason Harvard Business Review tagged data scientists as the sexiest job of 21st century. And the reason is analytics as a function uh, has a lot of thing to do about problem solving. So if you're someone who likes to solve problems, uh, to be engaged in interesting business issues, uh, use data to get, uh, let's say, factual answers, sometimes very interesting and counterintuitive answers, right? This is actually a great field, which will always keep you engaged, very engaged. Uh, it's a techno-functional role. So it's suitable for people from IT background also and for non-IT background also. So this is something we'll be talking about in more detail. When we say different job roles, you would see there are job roles which are more suitable for IT background. There are job roles if you are from non-IT, you can begin with. And the beauty is once you start based on your interest, based on your performance, you can keep switching from, let's say, more technical to less technical, less technical to more technical. If I talk about my example, uh, by education, I am a mechanical engineer. I never did coding or anything during my college days. Uh, but... When I started, I developed interest. I started learning tools which needed a bit of coding, right? But then I realized, yeah, I can code, but that's not my core interest. I would want to be more of data scientist than data engineer, uh, solve, st stay more closer to the business problems rather than to the technical problems. So accordingly, based on your skill, based on your interest, based on your aptitude, there are multiple job roles and you can find your own track. Uh, and the other thing is high impact. So what you do as an analytics professional uh, or a data scientist has very high impact in terms of business uh, value. Uh, sometimes your small insights, 
sometimes what you tell where is the problem right can tremendously improve the business performance when i say business performance it could be revenue it could be profit it could be even customer satisfaction uh, which is extremely important so it could be sometimes that say when customer puts a request for our organization it takes 7 days to process it right but with your contribution with analytics help you may reduce that turnaround time to let's say 2 days or 3 days just sharing an example right so overall when we started talking about man companies we started talking about in context of interesting problems to work on lot of learning and exposure high growth and salary in that context data science definitely fits very well and even if let's say you do not start your career with man company you start your career with any decent company uh they very well follow the similar format because as we discussed man company set the trend for the world to follow so that thing is very very well established uh so i hope by now we get to understand uh what is uh, the importance of man company in our current world and why data science as a career whether it's a man company or a set similar to man company is a very exciting and high growth option for you now talking about data science the simple question comes is what is data science and in a very very simple term if i keep it extremely simple data science is all about gaining insights into data through computation statistics and visualization so in analytics in data science we need a uh, computation we need statistical skills we need data visualization skills it's a combination of three as a professional you may excel in one or two right some people may be extremely good in all three some people might be decent in one or two and very good in third so all those kind of professionals do exist and uh, the most important thing is to drive smart business decisions so no matter how fancy is the analytical technique we are applying uh, how much complex data we are handling if our work does not help the business does not help the organization it is of no value so the last point i always say is extremely important and if you understand this point even in interviews it will reflect in your thought process because sometimes in interviews uh, this is also something interviewers like to see are you someone who has just learned tools uh you have just learned techniques or you really think about the application of these two for some real outcomes the outcomes which improve the business performance which helps the customers which makes a life convenient or easier or sometimes even more secure as a credit card example i share uh do you have that thing that your objective is to reduce credit card fraud if it that objective is met with a simple analytics technique that is also very good if you need a machine learning or deep learning something very advanced that is also fine but the idea is you need to have that thought process which is going beyond just learning tools and techniques it's about application of these two to gain some real world benefits now in classical textbook definition in a lot of more details around it uh, there is a blog i have shared here uh, which uh, so on every page there could be some reference blogs we have and we would be sharing this with you guys so you guys can go through more of this uh, because from my side what i'm trying to do not stick to the textbook definitions which you guys have already access to but try to make it simpler more intuitive and connected to the uh, world around us okay uh quickly looking at if there is some question to pick okay great uh 
So one question I will take, uh, which is from uh, Prathamesh. Uh, Prakash, I'll be answering your question slightly later on uh, in more detail, uh, but I will try to touch upon it right away. So we know the recession in US, it's already there, right? And it is likely to be uh, hitting IT industry overall, right? But so far, what we have seen, and I had anticipated this uh, because we also have another uh, company, A Labs AI, where we work with a lot of US clients. So, what we have seen, uh, this recession uh, has put uh, end to the endless flow on easy money uh, many of these startups funded companies were having. So now they are compelled to be more competitive in their performance, in their hiring, in their cost effectiveness. And all this is actually helping Indian companies. Uh, so what we have seen, yes, the, uh, the endless optimism, or I would say uh, slightly foolish optimism, which was there across the world. Now people are more cautious about it. Uh, they are trying to be more judicious about it that if they have to hire, do they really need those people, right? Or uh, the person they are hiring, is the candidate really a good resource who will perform? That is there. But in Indian context, this is all going to help us because businesses overseas, business in US now have much more pressure to reduce the cost, to do the work more efficiently, a kind of cycle which has been helping us for almost 20, 30 years now, it is now starting to accelerate more. And I am talking about this purely from experience we are seeing currently with our, our own client set. And this is something I've also read on some of the portals uh, which do track the industry development and the overall trends which are going on. So, We'll only get to see this uh, in uh, coming months, coming one or two years. But so far, it seems that for India, it's going to be helpful. The other question which we had from Prakash. Uh, so Prakash, in short, there are different type of roles as we talked about. There could be roles where you may need coding a lot. Uh, and it might that role might be more suitable for computer science professionals, but there are roles or starting roles where you may need very basic commands, not really coding. They are not like software programmer light of coding. You may need to learn commands in SQL, Excel formula or something like that. And there, trust me, it's a mental block. We have students from commerce background. We have students from arts background. Uh, who are already uh, doing uh, course successfully and some students, many students from past who have done it and already placed. Uh, so in fact, one of our very old students, 2015 uh, or 16, uh, he comes from arts background. Uh, I think arts honors in history uh, has already written one or two books in data science. Uh, I think it's a third or fourth job for him right now. And he's also associated with us as a trainer now. So it's more of a mental block. Uh, so nothing to worry that way. Uh, yeah, Nishant, sorry, this question again for later. Uh, you need basic interpretability and understanding. It's fine. You may not be very good in these. That's okay. So, But it's learnable. Uh, Mayank, definitely, uh, especially if you have three years of experience in IT, that is helpful and even banking exposure because banking is one area which very extensively utilizes uh, uh, data science. So yes, it's totally possible, but more on it later, I will refrain from spending time on individual profiles uh, during the webinar. Okay, so we touched upon what is data science in very, very simple terms. Now let's look at uh, an important part which will automatically answer many of your questions. In fact, the last question we had, 12 years of experience in banking, some in IT, right? So in data science, 
there are three strong pillars. One is the business domain. Uh, you may call it as business domain, domain expertise, uh, business understanding. Second is technology skills, which makes it possible to move the data, capture the data, process the data. And third is analytical skills, which helps it to analyze that data, right? But we need three for any organization to succeed in data science. All three are important. So typically what happens, if let's say you are someone who is a beginner uh, and do not come from IT background or technology background, you may focus on skills which are related to, let's say, these two, basic data analysis, data visualization, statistical analysis and predictive modeling, right? And uh, basically more focus on analytical skills rather than technology skills. On the other side, if you're someone who is, let's say coming from CS background, IT background, development background, right? You may start with technology-based skills. Let's say roles like data engineering, data architect, ML ops or ML engineering, where your responsibility are to use technology platforms, to use databases, cloud computing platforms to process the data, uh, to make the data useful, which can be used for business and analytics purposes, right? So this could be a path for people coming from technology background and let's say zero experience. This could be a path for people coming from non-technology background and zero experience, or let's say one or two years of experience or less experience. But most importantly, something I underlined in my last slide also, this cannot succeed if you do not bring your business hat into the equation. You may do very fancy analysis, you may deal with very complex amount of data, but if you cannot leverage it to improve business or derive business value, it's of no use. That's where people who have business knowledge, let's say someone who understands banking domain, right, would be able to relate things that, okay, this is the banking problem. This is the problem, let's say, from credit risk point of view. This is the problem from loan department point of view. This is the problem from cross-selling point of view. What kind of data might be needed? How we can solve it? How we can answer these questions which leaders have, right? So these kind of people are likely to play either leadership roles if you're very senior and you are very good with the other areas or more like an analytics consultant role. But the point is uh, all three are important. Skills to understand the business problem and derive business value. That's where if you are an M MBA, you are coming with past experience in let's say sales and marketing domain, B uh, banking domain, insurance domain, right? Uh, sometimes we get candidates even from manufacturing domain because that's another area where data science and AI has started uh, delivering a lot of value, right? So that domain knowledge is going to be very valuable because without that, your skills and tools will be of no use. Similarly, if you are from IT background, you are uh, more keen to start with roles like data engineering, uh, there is a very high demand for those kind of roles as well. If you are coming from non-IT background, but zero experience or very low experience, you are just as a beginner, as a fresher, you may focus on these side of skills. Now, of course, as you progress, uh, we have many examples. You, you, let's say, go through a data science course. You start your career as a data analyst, business analyst, but in a one, two years down the line, you reach this stage where you understand now both the things very well, right? In, let's say, 10 years, 15 years, you will reach this stage where now you can actually lead the whole analytics practice uh, or be group head uh, where multiple teams are reporting or working under your guidance. And over the years, you have seen how to leverage uh, analytics for different kind of business problems. 
and what are different business issues where it works, where it doesn't work, and how to make it work, most importantly. And again, uh, for people with experience, uh, it may not be very wise. Let's say someone is coming with 10 years of experience, more than 10 years of experience. So the usual mistake they make, they think they will start as a data scientist. It doesn't work that way most of the times. Very few cases, you will be able to make a career transition as an individual contributing role as a data scientist. The more probable or most successful path would be uh, based on your education or overall experience, you target these roles. You know how data science works. You can interact with the teams who are working on it hands-on. You can understand what they are doing. You can explain this to the client, which is completely non-technical, but they want to understand from the business point of view, from the business uh, language point of view, that's the kind of role you play. And of course, if you have interest, you may start doing some of the things hands-on a little bit. But if you ask someone, let's say, who wants to do things hands-on, gradually you can move more job responsibilities on that side. Right. So this is something it's extremely important to understand that don't worry, uh, whatever background you have, the data science or analytics skills these days are like the IT skills in late 90s or early 2000. Everyone had to learn IT skills. Everyone had to learn how to use computer. Everyone had to learn to an extent how to, let's say, use Excel for that matter. So the analytics literacy or data science education is at the same stage. You may not become a data scientist or analytics. If you have interest, that's very fine. But even to value add in your current job, to get differentiated, to get ahead of your peers, right? Or to generate some value beyond what you're currently doing for your organization in the current role, data science has a lot of role to play. So not everyone would be data scientist, but everyone need, would need data science in one or the other way, depending on what stage of career you are and what role you want to play. So I hope this part uh, brings some clarity because this is one thing which we uh, have very commonly seen uh, people get confused about. Uh, Naman, yes. Now it depends how much experience you have in digital marketing. Let's say you have uh, you are you have just one two three years of experience you may not worry about it and you completely uh, start fresh. In case you are someone who already has 5-10 years of experience in digital marketing, now within digital marketing, there is a lot of role which business analytics plays in calculating the ROIs of your ad spends, in calculating the effectiveness of the consumer behavior change your campaigns are doing, writing customer segmentation. So there that speeding mentorship or guidance comes into picture and will help you to uh, bridge that gap and how you should position, what you should learn and how you should position your profile will become important. But digital marketing is again in a digital space, the transition to analytics, people do all the time as part of marketing tech, as part of marketing insights and the consumer insights. Uh, Amit, the it will be an uphill task uh, in your case, right? Uh, for example, for some of the other uh, candidates, it might be a lot easier. In your case, uh, we may feel a lot, uh, get a lot of resistance. So rest, everything is fine. But yeah, 10 years of family business could be a challenge, which we may have to see. If there is a way we can justify it, uh, that's fine. But again, this is something we can connect uh, offline one-to-one -one with the help of counseling team and help you to answer. Right. Okay, there is a question uh, which might be helpful for everyone. How data science technology helps manufacturing sector? Uh, so guys, in manufacturing, quality control is one big area and demand forecasting 
inventory planning and management is another area uh, two i am picking the two most important areas where data science is used a lot one is the traditional statistical quality control but these days even ai is being used image processing is used in real time if on the plant uh, let's say there is a defect so i'll share an example in tata steels i, I do not watch the current adoption of it two three years back uh, there was one POC, uh, which I'm aware of, the steel rolling mills where they roll the steel sheets. Now, if there is a defect, that whole roll and sheet gets rejected. And generally, that defect used to get detected the later part of the uh, stage, which was a big waste stage. But with image processing and AI, in real time, there could be a flag that, okay, this batch or this sheet has some defect manufacturing defect in terms of thickness, thinness, right? And the very early stage uh, that can be stopped or uh, let's say action can be taken so that it should not happen that the whole batch is completed or whole sheet is completed and then we are getting to know. So just an example. So in short, quality control, traditional statistical thing is there, but AI-based quality control, defect detection, anomaly detection and uh, uh, demand forecasting, inventory planning, supply chain management. These are some of the areas manufacturing has been using very, very effectively. Uh, another question might be helpful for everyone in tourism and hospitality industry. So one of the biggest piece uh, where uh, tourism or hospitality industry use is pricing. So at what date, what would be the price of a ticket from one route uh, to the other or in one hotel in one location to the other based on the date, seasonality, uh, demand, uh, festivals, right? All those things do come into picture. So pricing analytics is one very hot piece which tourism and hospitality industry uses. Second is cross-sell, upsell, loyalty management, Let's say a customer has used your hotel once. Now, how do you ensure that next time also or maximum time a customer stays, they prefer your hotel or your property or they fly with the same airlines, right? And uh, the other piece is, again, supply chain management optimization in the hospitality sector. So, sorry, guys. So some of these things are not actually part of the context, but I like to answer as many questions. So some of the questions I might be answering very fast and briefly, but the idea is you get the crux of it, more we can do at later stage. Okay. Uh, so I'm a very good question. I will be answering that in detail in another five, 10 minutes, the difference between data analyst and data engineer role. Guys, I'm sorry, there are a few questions which are on individual profiles, uh, Mohit, Arshan, uh, I will be helping you with it, but offline, one-to-one, -one, do not want to waste uh, everyone's time for individual profile discussions. Uh, yeah, one question, larger context, supply chain. So uh, supply chain management, uh, has been area consistently for last 10, 15 years, very well using uh, analytics. So anyone who is related to this field can actually do uh, learn analytics, do specialization SCM. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities. All type of companies use supply chain management. Uh, uh, let's say PNG, uh, your uh, Dabur, so any FMCG company, CPG company, manufacturing company, MRF of the world, they use supply chain management day in, day out. So it's a very good area. Uh, Ravi, I hope you get this idea. Uh, so very good number of job openings. Okay. Uh, interesting question from Prakash. Business analytics has fast growth than data science. It provides leadership and able to open own startup because it provides managing teams. Prakash, not entirely true. So if I talk about the man companies, right? Uh, they do use business analytics also, but they use data science also. But if we really see 
the value which they have created, or when we talk about AI models, that's completely data science. That very well goes beyond business analytics. So I would say both are important, but uh, depending on your interest and skill set, you may stick to one or you may start with business analytics, move to data science, like what happened in my case. That's how I uh, did it. Uh, so uh, we can discuss a little bit more about it in coming slides, but I would say what you're thinking about is a very narrow use case. Overall, data science generates more value when you think of technology companies or product companies. But yes, if we feel our skill is more suited for business analytics, that's a great uh, choice to go for. Okay, Shubham, uh, I am from mechanical engineering background, right? We have a lot of students from mechanical engineering. Uh, some of the uh, testimonials also, uh, video testimonials, recent batch, I think, graduated. We can share it with you. So it's totally possible for mechanical engineers to shift to data science. In fact, a lot of analytics professionals I know, not just myself, are from mechanical engineering background. Okay, uh, one question which was, is data analyst or business analyst same? Good question. We will be touching upon it in the next one or two slides. Uh, Shilpa has a question. Is there any education domain in data science? Uh, typically, people coming from quantitative background are preferred. But if I talk about last two, three years, it's open to anyone who acquires these skills. Uh, Ankit, not necessarily to begin your career, but yeah, the career growth is typically better uh, if you uh, do masters, but it's not mandatory. Okay, guys, quickly moving on, uh, because some of the questions will be automatically answered uh, when we move to the next section. So I'll uh, jump to it. Uh, Sabish, before I do that, any uh, poll, anything which we want to do it, uh, we can do it right now. No, Sumit, we are good. Okay, great. So, <clears throat> let's understand in real world, how does analytics work uh, at an enterprise level? This will help you to understand uh, data engineering versus data science and why both are important, okay? So when we talk about the world we live in right now, there are so many different sources of data. Your smart devices, sorry, one minute. Your smart design. I'm facing a little bit of challenge. Sorry guys for the disturbance, okay. We have smart devices like Apple Watch, smart health variables, camera feeds, even these days our cars are connected uh, and pass on the information about how it's driving, if there is any fault which is coming up and all that, right? Your electric power grids, windmills, they have all sensors fit in and generating and passing on the data all the time. Then you have your traditional data like CRM data, customer relationship management, ERP, enterprise resource planning, which organizations have been using for last 30, 40 years, day in, day out, right? If you do not understand what does it mean, so I'll share two very simple examples. Let's say when you go to Starbucks, you buy a cup of coffee, right? That data about you and your purchase is being stored. That is CRM. Customer relationship management is storing the data about you. When you go to a bank, you make a transaction, right? You withdrew money, you swiped your card. So bank is storing all that data about the transactions you have done in what mode, how much, how frequently. That is part of your ERP, enterprise resource planning, because it helps to maintain a lot of information. And needless to see, uh, say there is an overlap between these two. Now, these days, then we also get data through apps like say Dropbox, Google Drive, mobile apps, web apps. When you book a cab 
on Uber or you buy something on Amazon, you are generating data. Okay. When you're listening to a song or a set up playlist on Spotify or you watch videos on YouTube, your behavior, your pattern, what you're doing, even that is getting stored and recorded. So what I mean to say in short, even if we do some commercial activities, even if we are commuting in our own car or hiring a Uber, even if we are listening to song or watching a video, playing a game, let's say, or chatting with our friends on Facebook or WhatsApp, right? In a way, all our data is being getting captured, maybe not at individual level. They may not know who, what exactly Sumit is doing, but they more, may know that consumers of this age, this demographic, this gender, in this location is doing this and these kind of things, okay? So we are part of the world which generates petabytes of data every second. Uh, the volume of this data is crazy. And what is even more challenging, this data comes in all type of formats, structured data. What do we mean by structured data? When, you are, when I talk about banking or coffee shop, your data is, is pretty much can be stored in a table, right? So if you see data which is stored in a table, let's say Excel file or SQL, that is structured data. But when you talk about images or chat, uh, where you are just chatting with your friends or speech or music, that is unstructured data because that cannot be put into tables and uh, Excel files. So, we need a skill or we need someone to capture all this kind of data. That is basically your data ingestion. Store it somewhere. And also process it because as you see this data from multiple sources is very messy. Capturing so much of information in different forms, different formats. You cannot directly use this data. You cannot analyze this data. Forget about building an app or intelligent chatbot based on this data. So starting from ingest, capturing and ingesting this data to storing this data and to process this data so that that data becomes usable by the organization, whether for analysis or whether to build some products, that whole is part of data engineering. So if you see the complete side the left side broadly is your data engineering. Capturing, processing, making data available is your data engineering. Now, once that data is available to the data science teams and the analytics teams or the product teams to be consumed, they may consume it to analyze the data, they may consume to build predictive models, AI models, they may consume this data to just build products, right? That is all part of your data science. So if you see this part on the right side, where uh, you, sorry, one minute. So this right side, the block which says data science, uh, now, the, what kind of data science we may do could be simple data analytics, business analytics, could be predictive models, data science based models, machine learning, AI based models. That's a different thing. But all that piece comes into data science. And before that, capturing the data, storing the data, processing the data, which is useful for the organization comes under data engineering. I hope to a broader sense, this makes sense that what is data engineering versus what is data science, right? Again, for you to read more, uh, and when I say more, there are a hell lot of more details to be understood on data engineering. I have given a blog on modern data engineering. Uh, this is about one and a half years, two years blog, but still extremely relevant we have covered a lot of details in this blog, including uh, 
that job roles, including the challenges, what is a value added data engineer does, what kind of certifications and technology data engineers may need, what are the popular tools and platforms. So you can go through that. It will be really helpful to understand data engineering more. But for the context, the discussion we have right now, I hope uh, you get fair amount of clarity to begin with. Uh, especially, I remember Soumya has this question. Uh, I hope it helps, Soumya. Great. Okay. <clears throat> so, a related question. Adarsh has put a question. Which role is good for ETL developer in data science? Adarsh, uh, if you have, let's say, very keen interest, you can target the job role of data scientist also. But my recommendation would be the sure shot, easier track would be target data engineering. And the trust me, we right now have a lot of shortage of data engineers. Many clients day in, day out, come to us to hire data engineers. Uh, last month, we also concluded a batch of 60 people. Uh, client wanted to hire all 60. That's a kind of requirement they had on data engineering. So I would suggest, based on interest, you want to pursue data science, it's perfectly fine. However, you may want to first begin with data engineering, make a career transition, and then based on the interest, you may gradually move to the data science. Uh, Divakar, there are some healthcare specializations in an analytics industry, but before one can move to it, there is a fundamental level of skill you would need. Uh, so it could be any certification course like ours. Uh, but yes, we do have some case studies and projects which are on healthcare uh, industry. So we have also worked with some healthcare uh, clients in data science in the past also. Okay. <clears throat> right. So the idea here was to understand data science at an overall level. How does it flow at the enterprise level and especially build an understanding about data engineering. Now, what we are going to do next, we are going to spend a good amount of time understanding the job roles in data science and your questions around it. We'll also connect this that what kind of course works with what kind of job role or what kind of course you may want to target for what kind of job role. But what I'm going to do, uh, stop for a short five minutes break as a breather but I'm leaving this screen, uh, this slide on the screen and would request you guys to spend a couple of minutes to read through it. Of course, I will be explaining, but you spending a couple of minutes will make it much easier for everyone. Stay connected. You don't need to drop off. We'll be continuing in this in just five minutes. Right now, it's uh, 12.09, so we'll strictly start at 12.15, maximum 12.15, and discuss this and answer your questions in detail.
Okay, guys, we can resume now. Uh, is recording uh, enabled, Sabrish? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, great. So, guys, this is something you should be able to even relate to what we have seen in last slide. So, the kind of things we need at enterprise level uh, in the data science space, these roles are pretty much corresponding to that. So starting from your data science, uh, the data engineering role. Challenge, yeah, sorry. Okay, so the first one is data engineering. Uh, as we discussed, it's all about capturing integrating and ingesting the data from multiple sources, structured and unstructured data, and organize the data, process the data, which can be used uh, for analysis, set up the data for further set of teams. Now, an important part of work these guys do is ETL. Some of you guys may understand it, many of you may not, it's fine, you will learn about it. But in short, ETL means extraction, extraction of the data, transformation, transformation of the data in a manner that what we have may not be usable, useful. So change the shape of the data. So one example is, let's say a bank customer is doing 10 different transactions in a month, but for bank, it is just, they are just interested to know the total number of transactions. They don't need to know the individual transactions what is the average value of the transactions, maximum value of the transaction and the type of transactions, that's it. So all that kind of transformation is typically done on the data. Or let's say the data is captured for a customer in different kind of currencies. They want to just transform all the data into standard one single currency, right? And then loading into the systems, which makes it useful for the analytics teams, data science teams, product teams for the consumption. Hence, this term is very popularly used, ETL, extraction, transformation, and loading of data. These people also need to have an exposure to data lakes, warehousing, right? There could be some overlap with data architect uh, and uh, data developers. So if you understand about data warehousing, uh, database developer, there's a lot of overlap this role has with those traditional roles, but trust me, it's in extremely high demand as of now, uh, equal as data scientists, if not more. Okay, the next role. Uh, The next role is of data analyst, which most of you guys very familiarly understand. Now, one point I will make, this is also related to question. In analytics industry, this role may also be called as business analyst, okay? Now, another thing which you may notice, the business analyst in IT industries is different and business analyst in analytics industries, very similar to your data analyst role. So just take note of this. So if you see a term business analyst or data analyst in analytics context, they mean same, almost. Uh, if you talk about business analyst in IT industry, they are, that's a different role. They are, that's someone mainly responsible for understanding the client requirement, gathering the client requirement and work with the software development teams to deliver those requirements. So the, that's why one thing I say, it's extremely important to understand the job description. When you look at any role, don't go with the designation of the name, go with the job description of that name. So uh, in data analyst role, your responsibility is related to data collection. Let's say that data has been processed. It is available on server, all apps, data pipelines. Uh, so you collect the data, you uh, 
manipulate the data. Let's say data munging is data manipulation because here also, uh, depending on the kind of analysis you may have to do, you may need to manipulate the data. Then uh, data visualization to present the data, which is easier to understand for non-technical people, or even to understand some hidden patterns in the data, we need data visualization. Data analytics, which could be just your reporting, uh, statistical analysis, where you may want to use statistical techniques to establish a trend, to understand a trend better, and basic predictive modeling. So in data analyst role also, you need some statistical analysis. You may need some basic machine learning, but not very advanced. Uh, the interesting thing is, we have seen many times organizations do want someone to be hired for data analyst, but still they would prefer a candidate who understands machine learning at least to basic to intermediate level. So this is one thing you might want to keep in mind. Now, understanding data analyst is easier. This is also important to understand the data scientist role because now what is going to happen is data scientist is going to play the same role which data analyst does plus the two, three things which is going to be very, very uh, important in this kind of role is uh, predictive modeling, machine learning, and natural language processing. So if you see a data scientist is supposed to do all this, plus ability to understand business questions more clearly, clean the data, uh, do some correlation between data which is disparate, which is not completely clear. Let's say you need some data, but that is not available. Now, how do you create a proxy data using some correlation with a similar data? Statistical analysis, similar to what we have seen in data analyst. But the three important things which are going to be different, data scientist is also expected to be good with predictive modeling. It could be based on statistical or machine learning and natural language processing. So what is natural language processing? In short, text analytics, text mining. Uh, we talked about, let's say you are capturing data from Facebook or Twitter to understand that you, your company has launched a new product now, what is the customer segment or public sentiment uh, about this product? Are they talking positively about it? If yes, what are the features they are liking? If there is something they are not liking and what are those things? So to, one, to basically process the text data or the common language which people use and draw inferences from it, we need natural language processing. So just an example, let's say an automobile company has launched a new car. Now that car has been unveiled, but they have not disclosed the price of the car or some other details because initially what they would do for a few weeks, they will understand the, the expected public sentiment versus the actual public sentiment. And then some of the decisions, some of the details like pricing, et cetera, maybe uh, they may come up later on. Especially we have seen this trend a lot, starting from Mahindra XUV, uh, now Hyundai Tucson, recently Toyota has launched uh, High Rider, uh, Maruti has launched uh, Grand Vitara. So all these companies, what they do, they unveil the product few months, few weeks uh, before the actual launch and understand what is the public sentiment around it. <coughs> And another example of natural language processing will be chatbots, right? Uh, but if you are moving from natural language processing to creating a chatbot, then that takes us to the next role, which is of AI engineer or AI specialist. Now, AI specialist or AI engineer understands the work which data scientist does, understands machine learning, but their main responsibility is to develop solution about solution from it. So a data scientist main responsibility is to analyze the data using basic to advanced techniques, 
basic statistical techniques, advanced machine learning techniques, et cetera, et cetera. But if we have to develop a product out of it, so when I say product, uh, AI, uh, the Siri, Alexa, uh, the intelligent chatbots who can talk to you, these are not products. What they're using at the back end, data science methods, data science models. So AI engineer is someone who is going to develop a solution or a product from these data science techniques or data science methods, which data scientists may have developed. Now, the interesting thing is, when you're starting your career, uh, you may begin with one and progress to the other. So I'll share an example with you. <clears throat> In one of the projects, uh, I actually started as data analyst, and this is about uh, 10, 11 years back. During the project, I had to do a lot of things which data engineers does, uh, right? And by the time I close the project, we were working on advanced predictive models like a, what a data science team is supposed to do. So the roles are not uh, uh, just uh, very, very hard coded or fixed. You may play different kind of roles and there is always going to be a fung fun fungibility. So very often we have seen there could be a overlap between a role of data analyst and data engineer, a bit overlap. Then a lot of times you are going to be hired as uh, let's say data analyst, but in few months you are going to work as a data scientist. Uh, similarly, in many cases, uh, we have also seen someone is getting hired as data scientist, but 80% of their job responsibilities of are of data analyst. Hence, it becomes very important uh, that we go through the job description and responsibilities and not just the designation right so now which works for whom let's try to understand this so give me one second i will i'll stop my screen for one minute there is some challenge in annotation i'm facing so i would try it again yeah okay <clears throat> I hope my screen is still visible to everyone. Okay. So <clears throat> you may start as data analyst or data scientist. So the flagship course which we have, Data Science 360, targets both the job roles very, very effectively. And as I said, there's a fungibility. You may be hired as data analyst, but in few months working as data scientist, or your designation may say data scientist, but for initial months, you are working as data analyst. So for people who are coming from non-IT background, who are people who are, uh, let's say, never done programming or uh, have not used any of these languages or played with data, you can target these job roles conveniently. Uh, if you just want to target the job role of business analyst, data analyst, we have a course called Business Analytics 360. If you want to target the job role of both, you basically want to expand your possibility of being hired. As I said, sometimes even when they are hiring data analysts, they want they would prefer a candidate who at least knows some machine learning and NLP because these two techniques are becoming very important. So data scientist, uh, data science 360 is an excellent choice for you. I'll also tell you why this is a better choice, uh, but let me answer some of the other questions. If you are coming from database background, ETL background, engineering background, right? You can target this job role. So we have a course on the data engineering side. But let's say you are you want something very, very comprehensive, and this is going to be applicable only for a handful of profiles. We have a program called Integrated Program in Data Science, equivalent to PG program. Uh, it takes about one to one and a half years. Uh, I'm again repeating, not meant for everyone, only for selected audience. Uh, 
in this you will be learning all these skills and going up to the role of ai specialist or ai engineering so these are broadly the three programs but apart from that there are actually multiple programs we also have program applied ai which targets these two job roles and for some people it might be more useful but those details counseling team your respective counselor can help you as part of your career uh, uh, counseling i'm not getting into all those details so another thing which would be interesting to know let's say you join a company or a bank uh, which is very well established uh, let's say a company like amazon there there would be different teams playing different roles so there would be a team which is taking care of data engineering uh, there would be a different team which is responsible for data analytics and data science there would be a different team which will be working on ai engineering or ai solutions okay so what i mean to say different teams taking care of different key set of responsibilities however if you let's say join a startup or <coughs> a service organization or a consulting uh, organization right so the example which i talked about at that time i was working with mckinsey uh, it's a consulting organization the analytics or data science was itself uh, relatively new so we were playing all these three roles uh, in a project a single person was playing all these three roles in a project right so it is possible in certain organizations and mostly in startups or in uh, consulting or service organization service providers you may see a lot of fungibility that as a data analyst on a pro there will be a project you might want to be expected to learn some amount of data engineering and develop those skills also but trust me it happens very very organically right so there are roles if you see more suitable for non technical people and technical also can pursue it there are roles which are suitable for hardcore engineering or technical profile so depending on where do you fit how does it work right there is a role for everyone in this context let me look at some questions quickly uh, because there were some questions i thought this slide can help with uh, so for example darshna has a question cyber security for 2 years so darshna it's perfectly fine uh, this kind of career transition is very much acceptable these days so let's say you have working uh sumit we are not able to hear you sorry guys i got dropped off uh oh uh, am i audible now okay uh sabrish uh, can you guys hear me yeah yes amit go ahead okay perfect so i was taking a question from anurag so anurag yes deep learning ml jobs are very much available in india so for example the last two blocks uh these two right are dedicated to those kind of job roles especially the last one however it depends uh based on your profile will you be able to directly start with the machine learning focused job roles ml engineer job roles ai job roles or you may first have to begin with as a business analyst data analyst and then make a progression towards it but trust me uh 
all type of companies, banks, uh, insurance, online, offline retail, consulting, they do use ML and deep learning very extensively. And there are a good number of jobs, a great proportion of analytics jobs are in this area. Okay, so two questions probably related to the course curriculum, which I'm moving next. Uh, okay, so to answer Shilpa and Manohara's question, I will take one minute because next section we will jump to it. <clears throat> So there is one thing I'm skipping for now. I'll be back uh, to the slide, but just to help you understand, the data science statistic question, uh, program which we have, it is in collaboration with NASCOM, which is mandated by Ministry of Information and Technology. And NASCOM, as you know, is a very, very uh, elite uh, body of uh, software and IT companies in India. So the course which we have uh, is mapped to nine national occupation standards. And these standards are set up by company, let's say, uh, Ernest and Young, EY, Deloitte. So basically, the top companies set these standards in consultation with the government uh, bodies. So this course uh, will give you government-backed and industry-validated certification. Plus, the quality of this course is also validated by the fact once you complete the course, the uh, certification, you will also get 8,000 rupees of scholarship directly from the government of India. That's the kind of backing we have for this course. Uh, you may find some other courses related to NASCOM, but most of those courses are beginner uh, level courses. They will not fall into the deep skill category. So the program which Analytics Labs offers in data science falls under the deep skill category, which means the actual job-oriented uh, advanced course. Now, what does it cover? Uh, so first we'll understand Data Science 360, and then I'll talk about Business Analytics and Integrated Program. So in Data Science 360, uh, you start with building blocks, some basic concepts, which will help you if you are, let's say, coming from non-programming background. Uh, then the basic data analytics and visualization skills and move to advanced concepts uh, using tools like Tableau, SQL. Then you will learn Python for data science, uh, which uh, is the most uh, widely and powerful used tool in data science as of now. In this module, you will learn how do you use Python for data manipulation, munging some of the job roles we have seen under in the data analyst, right? Uh, basic statistical analysis. And then we move to predictive analytics and machine learning, which is something which is uh, going to give you a lot of competitive edge versus just learning the basic analytics skills. The next one is going to be text mining and NLP, which we have already talked about, is one of the very important skills, a premium skill in data science domain. Few years back, uh, this used to be an optional module, but as the industry evolved constantly, we keep evolving our uh, courses. AI and cloud computing, here we are not spending a lot of time on AI cloud computing, but just basic fundamentals and introduction so that as a data scientist, you understand the essentials about it. And another important component which differentiates our course is MLOps and deployment. Let's say you know how to build a data science model or analytics model, but do you understand how do you deploy it online or how do you actually put it in practical way, which business can start using it. So this is a key thing which we have added in last one year based on the recruiters and the company's feedback and what students have been facing in the interviews. And once rest of the modules are completed, you also go through some industry and functional sessions which is the part where we help you understand that how do you apply? Let's say you have 
learned all these skills and techniques. You have worked on assignments and projects. But in various kind of industries, telecom, banking, retail, online, offline retail, e-commerce, right? Uh, how do you apply analytics? What are the type of problems typically where it is used? And how would you go about it? So that you are not just good in learning tools, techniques, which many courses may be able to do, but also the application of these uh, tools and techniques that always remains a very, very core focus of the programs at analytics labs, right? Overall, to complete this program, it takes about six to seven months, close to seven months, if you are doing all the modules regularly. We give you up to one year to complete the course. So you have uh, close to one year to complete this uh, course. So in that flexibility is there, uh, take seven months, but if needed, you can go to up to 12 months to complete the course. And <clears throat> uh, why this is a good choice, even if you're thinking about business analytics program. Uh, so there is a good amount of overlap between business analytics and data 360 course. So if you see everything up to uh, four has good overlap. This module is not very detailed in business analytics 360, but most importantly, when we talk about hiring, the differentiating factors, let's say machine learning skills, text mining knowledge, right? Or ML understand, ML ops understanding, it's going to be way better with Data Science 360. Plus, the certification you get here is a lot more valuable with industry validation. The cost difference is uh, marginal, about eight, ten thousand 10,000 rupees, but the same amount you get back on the course completion. So that is the great advantage if you are considering any of these two roles, uh, data science 360 is probably something which most of the students do prefer. Now, coming to the integrated program, uh, which I said is meant for a handful of uh, participants. So we suggest you based on your profile and you have to apply. Uh, you do not get this program just by choice. Uh, so only if you are suitable for this. So it will cover everything as your data science 360, but most importantly, you would also have data engineering covered here, right? And in-depth AI and deep learning models. So this module, uh, these two modules, is basically also helping you to prepare for uh, these job roles, data engineering and AI specialist. So that is the additional thing uh, in on top of your data science 360. So this program takes about 12 months. Uh, it can be extended to up to 18 months based on if you need some flexibility. And for all these modules, we also have R for data science, uh, basically data science with R, uh, optional module available at a very, very nominal cost because sometimes we get candidates or recruiters who along with Python uh, want R also. So that flexibility is built in. <clears throat> so I hope along with the type of job roles, uh, based on the context, you get some clarity or the suitable programs. Of course, uh, customization and we have multiple other programs based on your profile, one-to-one -one discussions your, uh, during your counseling. We may suggest you slightly a different approach as well. So uh, Shilpa, I hope your uh, question is answered. Uh, so it takes seven months to complete the program, but you get 12 months to complete your submissions and all that if you need some extra time. And we also have uh, all modes of learning available for these programs. So one is the live online, the way we are interacting right now. Of course, you can't speak right now, but in real classes, you can also speak to the trainer. Uh, uh, classroom uh, in Noida, Bangalore, and uh, Gurgaon. Then we have... Uh, blended mode of learning also available, which is very cost effective. 
So uh, what happens is you go through the e-learning sessions at your own pace, but every weekend you also have the live doubt sessions to log in for different topics and different modules. So if let's say you are currently uh, working but do not have weekends free or you are not sure about the regular commitment, so blended mode of learning offers you a lot of uh, flexibility at the same time, similar, same effectiveness and the support courtesy, the live sessions you get every weekend based on the doubts or the questions you have. So the benefit is you may learn at your pace fast or slow. Uh, you may go through the doubt sessions if you need. If you're not available that weekend, it's fine. So all these three mode of learnings you might want to uh, consider at any given point of time. The other thing is uh, which I would want to uh, quickly share, but I would want you to go through it at your end. So for example, we, we are talking about people coming from academics background. Let's say they have been uh, as a professor, assistant professor or teaching, right? So we have students who work in academics. So for example, Nikunj, I think was in academics for five years, it's approximately seven or more years. I don't exactly remember. And then switch to analytics. Then another candidate who are starting as a data analyst, but with a very good salary package of uh, close to 40 lakhs per annum. Uh, Sandeep, uh, he got a hike of 160%. He, I think, had some prior experience of one or two years. Uh, you can go through their video testimonials to understand more about their success. Similarly, uh, someone was talking about non-technical background. Uh, this is a candidate I al already referred about. Uh, Archish comes from BA background, BA honors in history. He was our student in 2015-16. He first learned SAS, started his career in Air India as data analyst, then uh, learned uh, more advanced uh, programs in machine learning Python. He's now working as a uh, data scientist, right? He has already written uh, one book I've gone through. I, I think probably second he has already written or already working on it. He's also associated to us these days as a trainer. So you see that there are a lot many varieties students coming from and succeeding very well uh, in achieving the career transition or starting their career in analytics. Vandana for that example uh, had uh, some career break. So before she could uh, resume her career, she had a career break, uh, but still she successfully made a transition. Uh, then someone was asking about mechanical engineering background. So Sarthak was working in mechanical engineering domain after the course successfully moved to analytics domain that too with 50% hike. So there are dozens of other stories, uh, hundreds of other testimonials available on a website on our YouTube channel. But the idea is I just picked up a handful of these to show you uh, different backgrounds but common thing is they wanted to make a transition into career. They were committed to it, did the course well, did it nicely, and the results we have in front of us, right? So we can't go through this right now, uh, but definitely we'll share it with you. You can uh, look at it uh, if you still have any apprehensions and how do we proceed? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> One last section. Now, how do we crack it? What are some of the critical uh, <clears throat> steps? So first thing is, which we have tried to address in this webinar, uh, but still you might need to go back and do a little bit more homework. <clears throat> you have to do some basic research and get it right, right? Uh, understand the data science domain, not just because someone has told you about it, but read it about it, learn about it for yourself, understand how does it work in different organizations, right? Uh, some examples I have tried to share today, you want to read more about it, you are welcome to go through our blogs. What are the different type of job roles and career paths? And most importantly, what works for you? Which job role is more suitable for you, right? So this is something we have tried to help you to understand. 
but with more questions, more clarity, just exactly what is good for your individual profile. You are more than welcome to connect with the team, with me. Uh, our counseling team can help you to uh, do that. Right. Then next is acquire in-demand skills. These skills are some basic statistical mathematical concepts. Uh, this was another question which came up during the uh, webinar today. So you don't need to learn maths or statistics as an expert or you don't have to derive theorems out of it. The basic concepts are sufficient. When I say basic concepts, it's important for to you intuitively concept what is it, where it will be applied and how do we interpret it. So you may not understand or remember the formula of R square. You may not understand the formula of let's say Euler equation, but you just need to know what is it in our context, where we will use it and how do we interpret it. That's it. <clears throat> then skills related to data handling, data preparation, data manipulation, right? Which is uh, your first modules in business analytics 360, data science 360 I talked about, data analytics and visualization. Then again, statistical analytics and predictive analytics, this is going to be key differentiator because we often see there are a lot of people who have learned basic analytics skills through YouTube channels, through Udemy, et cetera. But for getting hired, you need to go beyond that. Uh, as I said, you may not initially work on machine learning models, but let's say there are five candidates a company is interviewing and there are a couple of candidates who also understand machine learning, definitely they are going to be preferred versus the others, right? So <clears throat> there are multiple resources to go through this. You can go through MOOCs, you can go through YouTube channels. There could be blended learning with support if you do not have time. If you think you cannot learn by yourself, you need trainers, but you do not have time to uh, go through regular classes, or for a blended e-learning, which I just explained we have. Then we also have instructor-led online training and boot camps, uh, right? Uh, we have classroom boot camps. So based on how do you prefer to learn, what works for you, you have various learning models available. It's just that a self-learning one does not work for everyone, but it's something if you want to give it a try, you should. Uh, we get students who have given it a try, but for one or the other reason, it does not work for them. They need instructor, they need a mentor to support them. Then you have to think of the remaining three learning modes. Then the third and very important thing is prepare for real world challenges. This is one key differentiation, which I would say analytics labs brings into the equation. To learn tools, techniques, there are many programs, many institutes, but that mindset, that approach, that how would you solve a business problem? How would you solve a real world problem? That is one thing which many of these sources do not bring in or do not focus on. So industry application is very important of what you are learning. Work on capstone projects, real life life projects, right? Join hackathons or join hiring challenges, right? For example, uh, uh, we see people who are very good with, let's say Python, Excel, Tableau, but when we give them a business problem, they are not able to think through that, how would they approach it? How would they solve for it? Uh, so it's very important that you hone your problem solving and communication skills uh, when you work on, uh, or when you're preparing for career in data science and how would companies know about this? Any reputed certification or accredited uh, course is one easiest way that you cannot go with your CV and say, okay, I have done this. Uh, the proof of, where is the proof? What's the proof you have done it? Of course, they are going to do interviews. They are going to do tests, but any reputed or accreditation certification is a very validated way to get your CV shortlisted in this case. Then uh, profile building and interviews. Uh, so another thing which we have seen is students are able to do well uh, in terms of 
learning tools, applying them also. But when it comes to interviews, they're not able to explain, right? Or they, for, to begin with, they do not even have made their uh, portfolio or their profile in a manner that it will attract eyeballs or they will be shortlisted or uh, in, invited for the interviews, right? Profile building is very important. How do you project uh, your portfolio, the problems or the projects you have worked on in correct manner? That's very important. Uh, mock interviews. So a lot of effort our placement team spends here uh, at Analytics Labs is the mock interviews. Uh, very often, we also now have started doing placement days. You get one or two days of schedule. You go through the exactly same drill you go through when companies are hiring you, starting from a Zoom interview, starting from a case study given to you, then a round where you have to uh, share or uh, pre present that case study, then another round of interview. So from our side, a lot of effort goes into uh, making this work in a scenario that when you face real interviews, you get as much as exposure you can get and you are prepared for those real world challenges. So <clears throat> also work for different internships. Uh, let's say you are looking for a job, but it's taking time. Be open for internships and freelance opportunities, right? You are applying for jobs. You have gone through interviews. <clears throat> But for some reason, you have not got selected in, let's say, two, three interviews. Work on the feedback. That's where your mentors do come into. You discuss this with your mentors that, okay, this happened in that interview. Sometimes we also get feedback from the companies directly, right? So it is possible you start your journey. Things are going fine. But when it came to interviews, it took some additional effort and uh, you needed feedback which we help you to get and also implement so that you are prepared for the next set of interviews. So you have uh, <clears throat> mentor guidance for all this. You have professional peer to join some online community platforms, some hiring drives, job referrals. So for I grew up career in data science, right? All these steps would be needed. Uh, we to take a journey our students who succeed in mentored approach. Uh, Sumit, there is some congestion we're not able to hear. Uh, guys, I think Sumit is facing some issues. So I think most of your questions are answered. Uh, I think you can share your uh, questions there in that uh, link. I think Sumit is back. Yeah, guys, actually, uh, this is mostly what I wanted to discuss. Uh, we can spend some time on your questions. Me and team can help you to answer those. Uh, of course, there could be questions if you want to connect with us offline, one-to-one. -one. In the coming week, we can also do that. Uh, team can help you to uh, schedule classes with me, uh, calls with me uh, for your one-to-one -one discussions. But so far, what we have discussed, any questions on that, especially on the job roles, uh, data engineering versus data science, the key skills at a broader level, or the typical path journey we take, or anything regarding a particular course or the certification we have discussed, uh, you can let us know. So any unanswered questions we have submitted in the queue, I think uh, it's already answered. All answered, Sumit. Okay, great. There are some questions regarding uh, 
about the profiles that we have taken it down, probably we'll schedule a session with the counselor and if needed with you. Yeah. So guys, we have broadly discussed different type of profiles and the job roles. It's just that some questions which were specific to very individual uh, profiles uh, that we have not discussed, that is better to be done one-to-one -one and we'll do that. And uh, Sabrish, any information you might want to share for the upcoming batches uh, that uh, <clears throat> you might want to share? Yeah, okay. I'm doing that. While there sure. is one question, you can take it up. <clears throat> uh, so Pratik, uh, business analytics uh, 360 takes about four, four and a half months. So you can assume close to five months. Uh, the main difference why data science 360 takes two months this is five months is mainly that day machine learning module specifically so this will take close to four and a half to five months uh, business analytics 360. Sure, I'll do that, Sanjay. Uh, Divakar, we do start batch uh, every six weeks to eight weeks. So yeah, so uh, for certification programs, you will have batches regularly. Shri, absolutely. Uh, all the mathematical concepts, statistical concepts will starting from the scratch, assuming you do not know anything about them okay even for that matter people who are from non-technical background we will we will assume you do not know any programming or coding at all so that's how these programs are designed to be so i will uh, quickly take up sanjay's uh, request one second yeah so sanjay uh, data science 360 starts from basics of building blocks in terms of uh, fundamentals for non-programmers in terms of basic mathematics, mathematical or programming concepts, the very, very basic, simple. Then you move to data analytics and visualization module because in this module also, you are starting with very basic tools like Excel, uh, Tableau, which is actually not really going to need programming, some basic commands, uh, drag and drop. And by this time you have developed that aptitude to understand some basic programming and SQL would need that basic programming knowledge. Now, only after you are settled with this, uh, basically once you are done with this model, you, are, you develop an understanding to handle data, to deal with data, to de deal with data tools, to see commands and understand, okay, what is this command doing? And this is, I'm saying, totally considering you are from non-programming background. Then you move to Python, where yes, Python needs programming, but Python programming is not like your Java programming or C or C++ programming, which typical a software engineer would do and will find it difficult. In fact, if that was the case, I would not have survived in data science or done well in data science. So when we talk about tools like Python or R, the programming is very intuitive. Many of the times you see a command, it's like any sh short English sentence, you will be able to understand what is that command doing. That's a basic nature of this. So here you will learn Python, you will learn py how to not use Python for programming or software development, but using Python for data analytics and data visualization. Uh, only then you would be moving to the next module, which is again Python based, but the focus is not going to be learning Python, but the focus will be applying Python 
for predictive modeling, machine learning, statistical modeling. So between this and the Python module, there will be classes which will help you to understand basic statistical concepts. The concepts you need to learn machine learning, the concepts you need to learn predictive modeling. So those concepts will be automatically taken care of. Uh, for some of these concepts, if you see in each of these modules, we have also written pre-learning pre-learning arts, right? So if we see this one, sorry, I am again going to get out of this uh, full screen, which is causing some issue. Yeah, so here if you see in these modules, we do refer to some pre-learning hours. So let's say there is a concept needed, basic concept needed. You learn some pre-learning modules, uh, they are e-learning modules, but it does not stop there. Let's say there were three, four classes on basic statistics. After you have gone through it, they will be again discussed in class what you understood, if there are any doubts, any confusions, how does it work in real life? How would you apply it with an example? So all those things will be taken care of. The next one is text mining and NLP, uh, which we already talked about. What does it do? How to, do you analyze text data, right? Uh, the next one is AI and cloud computing. So basically here you, till here, you have already learned machine learning. We introduce that when you transition from machine learning to AI, what happens? What kind of techniques you need? For example, especially neural networks. So the beginning point is artificial neural networks. And these techniques typically need very high computation power. So we use cloud computing uh, in industrial scenarios for this. So some basic understanding on AI and cloud computing while uh, learning this technique ANN, which is full, uh, the short form for artificial neural network. Then we move to the MLOps or model deployment. Let's say we have learned everything. Now, if we have to deploy it in real world scenario, how do we do it? So it's a short module because you have already learned these things. Now we are just saying after building a model, when it's working well, how do we deploy it? And the next one, the last one, uh, is kind of also your preparation for job interviews. Uh, that how do we apply it? What are the key industry functions or where this kind of analytics is leveraged? What kind of problems we do solve in these areas? So that's broadly about your Data Science 360. Any particular module you want more clarity on, please let me know. Okay, uh, in the meantime, a couple of quick questions. So Aniket, if you're already working as data scientist, right, next level, you can definitely go with AI specialization. So we have a program on AI and deep learning, which will help you to either specialize in artificial neural network, deep learning models as a data scientist, or even if you want to move to AI engineering roles, that is going to be the approach. Uh, so on our website, you would see two programs. Uh, the one which you should consider is AI and deep learning model. Uh, I'm assuming you already know Python, you already know machine learning. In case you do not know, then the program which you should be considering is applied AI. Uh, Mohit, no. So industry and function sessions are both recorded and also live. So once you have gone through it, when we are conducting sessions for the job preparedness, you will also have some of the overlap of those sessions topics in the live classes, because you may have some things to discuss, some ideas to bounce back. So there will be also some live sessions around it. Uh, Sanjay, Power BI is a tool similar to Tableau. Uh, both are the tools which are used for uh, data visualization specifically. Uh, the NASCOM certified program we have, it is on Tableau because we focus on a tool which has maximum number of jobs. But we also understand that Power BI is important. 
So we do provide a small module at very nominal cost on Power BI also. It's as of now e-learning, but you will get the live doubt support for that. So that approach is, we understand as a student, you cannot work on too many things in a given span of time. Focus on the most important part from jobs interview. But yes, there could be situation the other tool is needed. So have the ability or provision for students to go through that also in an assisted manner that they can go through e-learning sessions and we help them with the doubts live sessions on those kind of tools. So R is one such tool. Power BI is one such tool which we do that. But to simply answer your question, it's a, a data visualization tool. Uh, Mohammed, if you're not working right now and you have time at hand, you can dedicatedly, let's say, attend four classes a week, which is of four hours each. And then uh, also spend some time on self-study. Then go for bootcamp program. That would be better. So bootcamp is going to be slightly fast paced in terms of four classes versus two classes. But for freshers who are not working, who want to get into job quickly, it's a better one. But you will need to dedicate a more number of study hours for the bootcamp model. So, uh, Ravi, that's not uh, entirely true. If you divide 150 hours, so each week, you are basically going to spend six hours in live classes. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about the weekend batch, right? Uh, so, if you look at six hours each week, right, uh, 150 hours will pan out to actually six months, over six months, because uh, it would be uh, uh, around seven months. So divide 150 into six, that's a number of weeks, and then look at the number of months. The remaining hours, uh, of course, the there is no remaining duration in this case, but uh, apart from the six months, uh, six hours a week, we do expect eight to 10 hours of self-study you would be needing to do this program well. In case you were referring to bootcamp model, then in bootcamp it takes uh, lesser time. So it takes four to five months to complete Data Science 360 in bootcamp versus uh, seven months in weekend. Uh, Ravi, I hope your question is answered. So weekend classes are only six hours a week, hence 150 hours is going to stretch to your seven months. Okay, uh, guys, we'll wait for a couple of more minutes if you have questions. Uh, so we are well over the time, but thank you so much for your patience and staying connected. Uh, we can wait for a couple of more minutes for your questions. Uh, for any individual questions, we can uh, you can reach out to the counseling team and connect uh, with the with me or any uh, person you need help. And I hope the webinar was informative. It was helpful for you. Uh, then uh, <clears throat> you can make a decision whether career in data science is good for you. If yes, what kind of role you might want to begin with or what kind of role would be more suitable for you? Data engineering, data analyst slash data scientist. <clears throat> Yeah, Ravi, in that case, it will take about uh, four to five months. It will take a lesser duration. That's the reason for weekday classes. Great. Uh, so, Sabrish, uh, that's from my side. Uh, anything you want to share, uh, please let us know. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Sumit. Uh, very informative session as usual. Uh, so guys, uh, many of you have actually DM me about uh, Power BI uh, on the course curriculum. So given the demand uh, that 
especially for this session and we are as sumit said that uh, we are charging a nominal amount of 8000 plus taxes uh, for this program but for uh, so for this session uh, uh, who have attended the entire session uh, we already have some giveaways that the respective uh, counselor will be connecting with you post this session today or tomorrow and also for uh, folks registering especially who have attended the session and registering uh, we are uh, going to give uh, power bi e-learning modules as complementary for any of our flagship program that you may uh, be enrolling so anyhow our, my team will be reaching out to you and also if you have uh, posted your questions on this link that was shared a number of times in the chat we'll also be taking that seriously and we'll be connecting with you within 24 hours from now so that's it and also the frequently asked question and uh, questions faq's uh, link is also shared on our uh, course batches upcoming batches the lms <clears throat> uh, and <clears throat> and other things uh, you can also go through them and if anything specific you can also leave them in that uh, comments or the link that was provided uh, Sabrish, any deadline for this complimentary offer? I think for the upcoming batches, we typically have limited seats and uh, that might be there. Correct. Yeah. So this is a limited offer uh, for the next two days. So by Tuesday, we'll be ending this. <clears throat> that is on 30th of August. Okay. Great. Thank you. So guys, if you don't have any questions, you can drop off. Uh, if I can still see people online. Yes, Mohit, you have any questions you can put it across. Yeah, so I want to repeat the offer. So um, many folks uh, have directly pinged me and also we have people asking for Power BI as a part of the curriculum. Uh, Power BI is not a part of the curriculum, but we are actually giving it at a nominal cost of 8,000 plus taxes. But uh, for folks who have attended this uh, session, we'll be giving them as complimentary on our, uh, if you're enrolling for our any of our flagship programs. And that offer would end on 30th August. So basically before 30th August, if you're enrolling, then you will get Power BI as complimentary. Hope I was clear. So guys, if you don't have any questions, you can drop off as requested. Yeah, Tableau is a part of our uh, business analytics program and data science program. So Power BI is not free. Uh, we are charging extra for that. But especially for folks who have attended this session, who you have taken time on a Sunday morning, we would like to offer that as complimentary. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, Girija, uh, as Sumit was explaining about the modes of learning, right? So first is the orthodox classroom training that we have in Gurgaon, Noida, and Bangalore. And apart from that, uh, folks can uh, take live interactive online session anywhere in this world. So uh, through Zoom sessions. Now, talking about our most effective uh, mode of learning, which is called as the blended mode of learning. This is especially helpful for folks who are occupied or who are working on weekdays and not have much time during weekends as well, but want to utilize and learn and use time. So we have this blended mode of learning where uh, the previous class recordings will be given to you at one shot. So you can fast track the program. You can, you can spend on the program according to your convenience. And 
if you have any doubts then every saturday and sunday right i would like to repeat every saturday and sunday between 3 pm to 5 pm you will have a doubt clearing session one on one with the faculty so whatever doubts you had in that particular week you can jot it down and you can uh, speak with the respective faculty and clear it clear them and probably move on so this is the blended mode of learning i think uh, not many in the uh, in the market uh, actually give you uh, the such kind of uh, blended mode of learnings so that is yeah there will be doubt clearing session please yeah regarding the upcoming batches i have already pasted in the uh, chat window uh, maybe you want to go through yeah it is here and it's also available in our website analyticslabs.co.in i'm pasting it again here and i'm pasting it here as well yeah kun also classroom training or online training i just explained so we have centers in gurgaon noida and bangalore yeah uh, if you are if you can come here then definitely yes you will be sitting here and you'll be taking an offline class like how like orthodox like how it happens in your schools and colleges face to face nothing virtual here the orthodox uh, learning but for folks who are not able to come the same session right uh, will be actually uh, you can take it from zoom basically how that works faculty sitting in the classroom uses zoom logs into zoom something like this and will be sharing the screen like how sumit did uh, the only difference here is here you are not able to speak but in the in our classes live interactive uh, online classes let it be weekends or weekdays you will be able to communicate or interact with faculty so if you have any doubts you can always interact probably when my team gets in touch with you uh, maybe we'll share you some Uh, class recordings so that you'll get an idea how what this uh, interactive online class is all about yeah mohit uh, so you can definitely come down we have centers in gurgaon noida and bangalore so uh, through through phone session or through let's say a zoom session if your doubt is not cleared you can definitely take an appointment and come and come to the center and clear doubts uh for blended learning classroom sessions are not allowed yeah so uh, so for classroom sessions we have a different mode right so you can take that because here when we talk about the mode of learnings uh the commercials is also uh based on that right so for for let's say for a blended mode of learning uh the pricing will be 20 to 25% cheaper than the live uh, interactive sessions so for blended mode of learning there will there won't be any classroom sessions but yes you have every weekend you have one on one doubt clearing sessions and let's say if you're still not convinced on the doubt clearing session and you need to speak with the faculty then definitely yes you can schedule an appointment in our centers in gurgaon noida or bangalore and you can come and meet us uh, live in the center uh so girija again has put up a question is there any type of offline class sir because i am present in bangalore girija i'm just telling we have centers in gurgaon noida and bangalore in bangalore i am from bangalore so uh, we are located in hsr layout uh, the fame we are just behind the famous uh, bda complex we are right opposite to uh, uh, a to b adyar anand bhavan hotel and we are there uh, our center is there in bangalore for the last uh five five plus years great so i we can still see a few people uh hanging around so guys do you have any more questions uh if anything is there you can put it up in the chat window or if something uh based on your profiles i'm sure you would have put them in that link which i shared a uh, few times actually i'm sharing it again as well 
so that uh, we will get back to you within 24 hours. That's our promise. So thanks, uh, guys, for joining today. We'll wait for another two minutes. If not, we will end this session for today. I'm, I'm also uh, leaving our uh, WhatsApp and direct phone number uh, in case uh, if you have if you need to connect to us immediately, you can reach out to this WhatsApp number uh, or you can even call us. Uh, otherwise, if you have put down your uh, messages, we'll be connecting with you within 24 hours. Great. Thanks. Thanks for your time, guys. Uh, we will see. We will see you soon. Thank you. I'm ending the session.